Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about transparency. Here's the definition of the transparency. Hide actual detail from the users. Hide the actual process and information about database from the end users. There is no need to tell the users this database is divided into four fragments. Or there is no need to tell the users we have four sites for the databases. But in physically, our data is stored at different fragmentation. It is very good from security point of view. It is possible in distributed database, there is more than one copies of same data. But in user point of view, there is only single copy of data. So types of transparency, network transparency, further divided into two types, location transparency and name transparency, fragmentation transparency, number two and number three is replication transparency. So network transparency, location transparency, hide address of the site or the address of the server, name transparency, hide the name of the tables and databases. So the address of the remote side and the access mechanisms are completely hidden and it is very important for the security point of view. And the next one is fragmentation transparency. There is no fragmentation of my data. User assume that data is stored in single location or table. Fragmentation transparency enables users to query upon any table as if it were not fragmented. Thus, it hides the fact that the table the user is querying on is actually a fragment or a union of some fragments. Replication transparency. This Transparency is very important. Replication transparency ensures that replication of database is hidden from the users. There is only one copy of data. So combination of transparency ensure that all the transparencies like even application, fragmentation or network transparency will be applied on your system and the next one is distributed database control and three point authentication access right integrity constraints authentication controlling access to the dbms a data type constraint restricts unauthorized users so proper password and user name is compulsory for your database security so authentication is very important step for the security user for access right rights for operations who can delete data who can update data who can change the structure of the database who can create table so define all the access rights so if all the employees of our organization members can delete update data so it is very bad in security point of view and here are the some integrity constraints data type integrity constraint dbms care range of values and data type a data type constraints restricts the range of values and the type of operations that are applied on columns you cannot insert wrong value into integer type column in dbms like you cannot insert alphabets like 10 ten instead of one zero so you cannot insert alphabets into integer data type and the range is also restricted so you can enter only two characters or three characters which is specified in at the time of design.
So entity integrity constraint each tuple should be uniquely. It means data all the tuples are uniquely identified by using primary key. You cannot store same values into two rows. And the last one is referential integrity constraint which are the foreign keys. Foreign keys means first create parent table and insert record into it and then create child table. First register the student for example then enroll the course for the student. It is not possible that you are going to enroll a course and there is no student for the student. So it is a little bit funny but integrity constraints means we are going to maintain our database properly. So these are the basics of a DBMS and at the end thank you for watching this video.